So basically in a short session we will discuss about how to study current affairs for UPSC examination. So basically what uh, you need to think, uh, you need to keep in mind before reading the current affairs in a newspaper. First thing choose any one newspaper like the Hindu or Indian Express that is uh, whichever you think is okay. The first example like handling of current affairs. So how to start? So basically first one what you need to do syllabus analysis complete and know about the basics. Basics which means that I am talking about the static portion. A static portion which means that uh, like for example if you are talking about like Indus water treaty. So you must understand about the like geographical fact about it and the how it happens, when it happens, how was the impact on India and as well as Pakistan and all the things that basic nitty gritty of the subject because that is very very important in terms of uh, prelims exam. Because in the prelims we have to be uh, focused about like the basic facts. Like if you, if you the mains exam is concerned you have to talk about the data, facts, figure, diagram and like how to write in intro portion, body and as well as conclusion portion. But if you talk about the prelims exam is concerned you have to mostly focus on the static portion with the respect of current affairs which one is a very highlighting right. So first you have to analyze the syllabus as well and the second portion like simple articles and linked from the particular aspect of syllabus. Simple article which means that which you, which you like it most and which the UPSC like it the most. Sometimes your interest is for like a modern history but for example UPSC is trying to focus on ancient and medieval part. So sometimes you have to be like uh, compromise your, your interest because what your UPSC interest that matters right. What your interest that's something different. So start the so from simple articles which you are uh, very good command over it. For example if you are very familiar with the political articles, politics articles you read about like but that will not ask in the examination like what the BJP and manifesto and congress manifesto of the UP election and upcoming any topic. So try to focus which one is the very relevant topics uh, which you have interest for initially period. Second what you need to do one can also read the news from the internet or web to generate interest in the field. For example you can read from the uh, internet like lots of article is also available there so you can read it from there. Next time complete a study of the newspaper within one to two months of the practice the above step. These are steps you have to be followed within one to two months not more than that because political news you have to be uh, avoid this. Second thing what you need to do uh, like once you are reading the newspaper make sure that a news like a road accident someone someone is that and uh, so like uh, like such news which is temporary in nature. So UPSC prelims or mains they will not ask some, some question that is a temporary in nature. For example like if you talk about monetary policy committee which is uh, like for the three month segment like for uh, in, in three months uh, we, uh, uh, in quarterly monetary policy is issued by the like RBI they are the taking about like key fiscal deficit na hua or whatever the to topic is that is not concerned about. The main topic is like budget mein kya tha and economic survey that is very important. So make sure like that's those topic which is relevant in your exams so you, you need to study thoroughly. Okay, so if you talk about like syllabus, news 1 and 2 is really relevant for the field like there is lots of uh, every day like Monday to, to Friday till Friday because Saturday and Sunday there is no uh, like you know there is no uh, <coughs> editorial section is over there. So first time like the Hindu news 1 and 2 editorial section is important in terms of prelims and as well as, well as mains exam because the editorial section is important because that section written by like Niti Aayog chairperson sometimes RBI chairperson is talking about. Indian Express like explains page yet yeah, that you must need to focus. No need to buy or purchase because once you don't uh, uh, download the Indian Express app and start reading it. So uh, to inculcate your interest, to cultivate your interest because that is very very important in terms of your, your exam because until unless I am going to explain the, each and every relevant topics for your exam but once you start reading so you have to make your own space in your brain to think about the your own uh, process your own opinion towards that topic that is also important because after once you uh, crack the prelims exam that is a topic's mains exam. 
So mains exam you have to write your opinion or your thought processes that is very important because once you are going to write the essay that is for the 1000 words. So in that segment you have to be uh, think in that way so that you can write up to the 1000 words. And live in the economy snippets that used to uh, come in the examination. So that is important. So only that relevant portion you need to study. So you have to understand the basic funda like how to study current affairs. Now further moving. So in this class we have covered like a falcon view. Falcon view which means that basically uh, like with the help of mapping as well. Right. So if you talk about like uh, we have covered all the newspaper editorial section like uh, decoding and how to interlink with the static portion. 360 degree approach we have an intensive revision plan so that the, I just explained the lots of tricks so that you will get to know that uh, how the questions is used to come and how we will learn the facts about it. So basically we have covered the Hindu Indian Express alignment and all the session that is uh, relevant. Here comes is the new term that is a Finlandization. So this is an article from Indian Express. What exactly the mean of the word Findal, Finlandization? So here is <coughs> Finlandization. What exactly is term is? One country is basically we can say that a smaller, a smaller power is basically is bows down in front of larger power to safeguard its tutelar independence that is known to be a Finland, fin, Finlandization. So sometimes they will ask you in your prelims exam, Finlandization recent in the news in means what? So basically we can say Finlandization which means that a smaller power bows down in front of larger power to safeguard its tutelar independence. But one needs to be careful when applying the same principle to the other countries. So that is a term of that has been used of Finlandization as we can say this term is suitable for the Russia Ukraine issue because Russia wanted to invade Ukraine parts. So <coughs> we can say that has been terms is used in the exam. The origin of Finlandization can be traced back to the cold war as you have studied in the cold war in the world history that is a book by Arjun Dev. So you have to be I just would like to suggest you to read the uh, uh, Initially, first uh, first to second chapter of Arjun Dev class 8th or 9th or world history book. So, you got, got to know the what exactly the term. The Cold War, Finlandization. Finland did not join NATO and there was an interference from Moscow due to the Finno Soviet Treaty of 1948. Right? However, the relations between relations between the two nations turned sore during the infamous night force crisis of 1958 when Moscow refused to accept Karl August Fagerholm as special democrat as the prime minister of Finland. So soon after Russia's revanchist assault on Ukraine sovereignty precipitated by the threat of Ukraine joining NATO, its foreign affairs spokesperson. So there are things that have been mentioned. While a claim can be made by the Moscow did not influence Finland domestic and foreign policy. So it nonetheless allowed them to maintain their sovereignty and did not actively interfere in their affairs. So basically here is the foreign policy <coughs> concept is there. Finlandization which means a smaller power is uh, uh, has to be attacked by the larger power for their own interest. That is the term which has been used. Basically in the gist we have mentioned it. The Finlandization. Okay, so here is now uh, is a prelim specific as you can see in the recent news. Cash strap Egypt hikes Suez Canal transit fee from ships. So basically, Suez Canal, as as we can see, is a <coughs> the uh, fee hike by the Suez Canal. As we can see, we will got to know the basic uh, facts about the Suez Canal. So cash strip Egypt interest uh, a transit fee on. So basically. 10% of global trade including 7% of the world <coughs> trade that is 7% of the world through the Suez Canal and which connects the Mediterranean Sea. So now we got to know the basic facts about this Mediterranean and Red Sea. 
So how you will uh, got to learn? As we can see, the is the interest of about 10% of global trade is happening with the world oil flows with through the Suez Canal. And another recent news: Suez Canal crisis was also there. Okay. So about Suez Canal, we got to know because this is a very prelims specific point is there. The Suez Canal is the artificial sea level waterway running north to south. Make sure, basically, uh, with the help of Atlas, you got to know the where is exactly the location. So uh, south to north, running north to south. Sorry, across the isthmus of Suez in Egypt, and connect the Mediterranean Sea, the Red Sea. So how you will learn is Mediterranean Sea, and here is Red Sea, and here is Suez Canal S W S M R. So basically, Suez Canal is connecting the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea. The canal separates the African continent from Asia. So sometimes in your prelims exam, they will ask you like, uh, like Suez Canal separates Africa from Europe, like Europe to Asia. So make sure that that statement would be incorrect because that does not make any sense if you look it very carefully in the map itself. So the, the Suez Canal separates African continent from Asia and Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea. It provides the shortest maritime route between the Europe and lands of lying around the Indian and Western Pacific Ocean. It is one of the world's most heavily used shipping lanes carrying over 12% of world trade. So make sure that it is carrying 12% of trade, world trade or 10% of global trade including 7% of the world's oil flows through the Suez Canal which connects the Mediterranean and Red Seas. For Egypt, the canal which first opened in 1969. So Suez Canal was first opened in the 1869, it is a source of both national pride and foreign currency. So in short, we got to know the first it was opened in 19, sorry, 1869 and it connecting to Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea and the canal separates the African continent from Asia. Okay, so as we can see here it is on the map. Here is Mediterranean Sea. Here is, we can say here is a Suez Canal is flowing through, and here is Yemen. And here is, if you talk about Indian Ocean, in Saudi Arabia is here, and Red Sea is here. And here it is a Mediterranean Sea. So it connects Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea. This one, as we have discussed. And one more thing is here is a Suez Canal, Red Sea to Mediterranean Sea. And it is dividing part of Asia's, as we can see here is a Suez Canal and Cape of Good Hope. As we can see the earlier times, uh, the time of British invasion and the European, uh, European arriving in our country was arriving on that time. So that was a time here is uh, the things was in this way, they are trading it, right? In the world history you have uh, studied. So that time, that's why. With the help of this one, they used to go like Morocco and that, that one part. So that's why it's a Cape of Good Hope and that's why we find out the shortest route of, so shortest route of with the help of this one here is the Red Sea as we can see. So basically in that time, uh, we used to uh, follow the uh, Cape of Good Hope with the, uh, with the route of Africa. So that was too long to reach in the Euro European countries. That's why we discovered the Suez Canal that the shortest route which is connecting from <coughs> Asia to Africa and as well as Europe. Now here is next one. <coughs> so India to face tough choice at UNGA, which when United Nations General Assembly. So pressure on from the US, European countries seeking the isolate Russia. So after abstaining from the UN Security Council Resolution 8979 condemning Russian action in Ukraine, on India faces more difficult choice with the US and European-led coalition now pushing a vote to the UN General Assembly aimed to isolating Russia because we have a good relation with the US also and as well as USA as well as Russia as well. So UNGA vote which could take place early as well, UNSC, United Nations Security Council which India was a non-permanent member of UNSC, right? So UNSC late on Sunday night on 
emergency special session to examine the text of resolution which Russia has voted. So, India has thus far framed from the supporting any resolution criticizing Russia, but officials said India's growing concern over the humanitarian crisis and India's student caught in the crossfire in the Ukraine could find a mention in the new resolution. So, Russian embassy in, the, in India tweeted that highly appreciated India's independent and balanced position at the voting in the UNSC on February 25th. So, basically, who you, what you have to understand what exactly the role of UNGA. Okay, so as we can see it here, here is security council, here is the principal organ. So, security and implements, here is UN organs. So, United Nations organs is here, UNDP, United Nations Development Program, UNHCR, UNICEF, United Nations Environmental Program. So, that was a UN organization, UN organs. And <coughs> specialization agencies is FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization. UNESCO, WHO and WTO. Sometimes they will ask you like WHO is the organs of UN. That's why I told you this was the very, very prelims specific. They will not ask you the mains exam. This is not more helpful in the mains exam. So, sometimes they will ask you like in the, in the context of like FAO or UNESCO or WHO. WHO is a UN organization and you have to find it out which statement is correct. So that's why you have to read between the lines which one is important. So in that context you have to understand like WHO is a specialized agencies of United Nations. So here is WHO and WTO is not a UN organs right. So security council if you talk about 5 permanent members with the powers of veto and 10 non-permanent members elected by 2 years terms decide. So how many 5 permanent members of security council? China is also a part and China is always uh, voting against the uh, interest of uh, India. So, what is what was the term is basically if the any country which is a permanent member of UNSC is voted against the, that country, so that country will not able to make a uh, make a list of UNSC veto power. So, general 193 members, one country, one vote recommends rekeeping forces, economic and social council, international criminal court. National Court of Justice. So, make sure that only the five permanent members of which have a veto power that India was not a part of that.